Italy versus Slovenia. This is the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Win for all. Welcome to Manila in the Philippines. It's the FIBA Basketball World Cup, and it's the battle for seventh place between Italy and Slovenia. Well, no surprise here in Manila when Luka Doncic shows up. The show is about to begin. He heard a roar of applause when he ran onto the court today. As Slovenia already assured of a top eight place. Uh, after reaching the quarterfinals and a spot in the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournaments. They are ready to go and they will be taking on uh, a very good Italy team as well that also have those two things guaranteed. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Mike Taylor. T and T coming at you. Uh, Mr. T or Mr. Taylor, is this a tough game to play for these teams? Because you played it when you were the coach of Poland. Yeah, we played it last World Cup 2019 in Beijing. For us, it was different because our team, Poland, was matching up against the United States. Both of these teams view this as a winnable game, but in both cases, there's unique storylines. For Slovenia, obviously, Luka Doncic is the show, but he'll be without two key players today, Klemen Prepolic and Jakub Blazic, so they're even more shorthanded than they have been throughout the entire tournament. But on the other side, with Italy, it's the last game for a fantastic Luigi Dottome, a great member of this Italian national team. He played really well in the, in the quarterfinal lost. Uh, but right now, it's one of these situations where both of these teams want to put a positive finish on their World Cup runs. And it's been really solid World Cup play for both Italy and Serbia to get here, Italy and Slovenia to get here. Well, both teams have had some great moments in international basketball over the years. Slovenia, of course, made that incredible run to get to the Tokyo Olympics and, and then the semifinals. And Italy, uh, they have also had some great moments uh, in various international competitions. Both had high hopes, but the reality is it's been a very competitive FIBA Basketball World Cup. 32 teams just to get to the quarterfinals uh, and to knock off, to tick those boxes that we talked about. Uh, it's uh, something to be proud of and relieved about. Yeah, and what we found with Poland was we overachieved to reach a certain point that once you got up there with the big dogs and, and you got playing the top teams, reality set in, and then you have to kind of just compete and do your very best. And, you know, for both of these teams, we'll see where they can finish. But, you know, it's been a great World Cup for both of these teams, and, and let's see how this battle for seventh and eighth place plays out here on the court today. Well, it's Italy and Slovenia, and then the battle for fifth place between two teams from the Baltics, Latvia and Lithuania. So that is going to be a lot of fun. Remember, hashtag FIBA WC for FIBA Basketball World Cup uh, in the social media. And that's been going crazy uh, the last few weeks. Well, the last month or so, as uh, teams have battled for basketball's ultimate prize, international basketball's ultimate prize, the Naismith Trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, we now so right now we're going to have a pause in the commentary for the playing of the national anthems.
Please remain standing for the national anthem of Italy. Well, a lot of things go through your mind if you're a player like Gigi Tatome, the captain who is playing in his last basketball game. He's retired, and uh, this will be it. And I would not be surprised if he teared up a little bit. Looks like he already has. Uh, Gigi Tatome, great servant for Italian basketball and a friend to many, and I'm sure he will uh, remain involved in basketball moving forward. And you can see that players from both of these teams know each other very well. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was with Alexei Nikolic and Nikola Melli. So Adamir Zarapovic from Bosnia and Herzegovina in the middle, the crew chief. And Martin Vulic from Croatia on the left. And Martin Kozlaskas from Latvia on the right. And uh, I have it good information it's his birthday that is a wonderful way to celebrate your birthday a classification game here at the world cup somehow he did not get the pie in the face but there's still time who so. knows what's going to happen back at the hotel Jim? I wonder what is Jip's birthday. I guess it'll be next next year about this time. But the tough thing with Jip is catching him to smash a pie in his face. I tell you what, Jip is a tough act to follow for all mascots. We're big Jip fans. Slovenia played against Canada the other night. It was 50 to 50 at halftime in the quarterfinal, and. Uh, well, they just fell away in the in the second half. Alexei Nikolic, Mike Toby, Gregor Horvat, Bine Prepolic, and Luka Doncic in the starting five. Ziga Samar. Clement Prepolic won't play today, nor will Jakob Lazic. Uh, Ziga Dimets, Zorn Dragic, Gregor Glass, and uh, Jakob Chebasic. There's Doncic, the player that everybody wants to come and watch. Well, he puts so much heart into his national team. He's played 30-plus minutes a game. He's really laid it on the line. He, he's really trying to elevate the supporting cast. So much pride in what they've done in recent years. One of the key guys has been Mike Toby. He showed some signs, hitting some three-point shots in the last game. But again, what a big key for Slovenia. Teams have just been basically switching pick and rolls, and it's been one-on-one -on -one for Luka. Now, you know, this has kind of taken away some of the effectiveness of Toby. But hopefully in today's game, they can find that rhythm. Coach Sekulic has done so many great things with the Slovenia national team for the last few years. And again, Jeff, let's recognize, even with the star power of Luka Doncic, this roster has overachieved. They're missing so many key pieces. So to get to this game is a great accomplishment for Coach Sekulic and this staff. Yeah, I would imagine Slovenia going to be stronger next year. Marco Spisu, Stefano Tonut had that incredible reverse layup the other day against Latvia. Nicola Melo, Simone Fontecchio is back from after missing the Latvia game and Achille Polinara, Richie Spagnolo, Juf, Severini, Procida, Paiola. 
And uh, there you have the captain, Gigi Datome. Look at that. He's uh, 203 national team games. His first was against Croatia, 2007 total points, 1,765. And Jeff, those are meaningful numbers today. He's been such a great figure for this Italian national team. And we have the honor to watch him play this last game. And Nicolo Melli, I think we're going to be saying the same thing about him one day. 7.7 .7 points, 7.9 rebounds, 3.1 assists at this World Cup. And again, you can see he gives it all to his country. He still has that big scratch down the side of his face that he picked up in the quarterfinal. And Gianmarco Pizzecco, the head coach of Italy, who uh, by all accounts is loved by his players. We know the fans really enjoy him. And, you know, it feels like uh, some of the battles that he's had with, in terms of, like, composure on the sidelines, which have tended to get him in trouble. Yes, he's been ejected here at the FIBA Basketball World Cup, but the last few games, the last couple of games when we watched him, he's he's managed to last the whole game. And how do you evaluate his performance? Yeah, I think he's trying to grow through some of his situations with, you know, knowing limits and knowing when to stop. Uh, again, the most important thing is the response from the players and the team. He's gotten a lot out of this team to get to this point, and we've seen him on his best behavior the last few games. Well, Chip just can't stop taking center stage. He's uh, handling the countdown today and just going to relax a little bit, lean up against the cube. Oh, oh, he almost fell. Jeff, was Jip checking his watch? I think he was. You see, like, it's kind of rude, isn't it? Do robots and do robots and computers have a watch? I thought they had like a built-in system. They didn't have to count. Or maybe he was just. Luka Doncic coming out. It's been uh, the center of attention, not always maybe for the right reason. Certainly has a lot to say to the referees at times. And I think we're kind of getting to the point where as you look at Gigi Datome, emotional moment. It's going to be an emotional 40 minutes for him. And I, I dare say he might tear up as well at the end of the game. But with Doncic, let's see if he can uh, have a great game today and lead Slovenia and allow us to see the best version of them. Yeah, Jeff, it's about his leadership. What he does, he will impact his team and hopefully he can keep their emotions focused on great performance rather than discussing with the referees. Good luck. We're underway in the Mall of Asia here in Manila, Slovenia against Italy in the battle for seventh place. And Mike Toby on the baseline hits his first jumper. And that's a great start. Uphill dribble handoff, repost for Toby, and he hits the shot. Toby will be key in this game today, his production. Achille Polinara. His pass intercepted. Luca knew what was coming. And then he just goes right down the lane. And Slovenia get it back. Doncic, and that was short. He follows the miss and can't get it. You were uh, a little concerned about his shot selection the other night well Luca when he goes to the basket it's so physical and he has such a high rate of success when he's making shots from the perimeter it's easier on his body 
and obviously when he's hitting those shots, he has a great chance to help his team win the game. But again, if he's going to play so many minutes, he can create better shots and easier shots on his body from the perimeter. Nikolic. And Prepolic with a push. And Jeff, when you see Doncic in transition, he's so big, he sees over the crowd, and then he's able to just deliver the passes from such a high point. He found Nikolic on a skip for an open three. The beautiful vision, but his size allows him that advantage. Tonu, back outside, they get another open look, and this time Spisu knocks it down. Tonu made that play, getting into the paint, a beautiful paint touch three, and we know Spisu is capable of big games. The two NBA stars guarding each other, now the ball gets away, Mele drives in and dunks it with two hands. Toby. Quick start for Mike Toby. Spain pick and roll action. Nikolic called for the second pick and roll, drew the switch, and a nice finish from Toby. Fontecchio, meanwhile, back on the court after a missing a couple days ago when he was under the weather. Doncic throws it over to his teammates on the bench. So there wasn't, Gregor Horvat was not there. As Doncic tried to work in the post, he expected Bine Preparlich to be in the corner, but Bine made a nice basket cut. They were just not on the same page. Melly. Gregor Horvat is fouled. Fontecchio picks up. Looks like he's had a haircut since he's been in Manila. I was toying with the idea. Fresh fade. Yeah. For Fontecchio. Looks like Toby got away with a foul there, and I'm guessing uh, they just let play go on as he had the break. Again, you see Doncic really trying to initiate contact on these drives. Blows and there's a foul, and Sakulic is going to call timeout. The first for Slovenia. So Italy with an 8 4 lead against Slovenia. So, Jeff, it's a great sign. Fontecchio steps into his first shot and buries the three. He's such an important part of this Italian national team and was unavailable last game due to illness. Trying to finish his World Cup strong. Oh, what about that? The putback dunk from Achille Polinara. And, Jeff, 
you know, when your offense is not clicking as Slovenia's got off to a slow start, you've got to maintain your defensive energy. We don't see the multiple efforts and energy defensively right now from Slovenia, and that's giving Italy easy baskets. Bisu to Melli, back to Fontecchio. Really good tempo and teamwork here from Italy on this possession. Oh, Melli fumbled it. Polinara rushed it a little bit, but good work from Melli. And another layup for Polinara. And you can see they're really working together to create a good shot. They get the multiple effort on the board and then an easy layup on a basket cut. It's too easy for Italy right now. Slovenia's got to pick up their defensive energy. Prepolic. Jiga Samar is going to come into the game early today. Here is Tonut. And Jeff, just no awareness. Help side did not see the ball there at all. Did you notice how his reverse layup that we got so excited about the other day got on the highlight reel? Here goes Doncic. And Jeff, that's beautiful deceleration. Well, you willed it to happen because... Uh, I said I mean, it's either on there or we're out of here. Right. You willed it to happen and... Pre-game, as you saw Tonin coming out of the tunnel, I think he winked at you in appreciation. Polinara was so good in the Olympic year when he hit all those threes at the OQT to get Italy, help get Italy to the uh, Olympics. And you know, the energy level may not be right where it needs to be for Slovenia to start this game, but they have been had a shorthanded group. Zero, one, two, okay? Slovenia has had a lot of responsibility and expectation on Luka Doncic. Well, he likes to drive to the basket, as you were talking about. But you see the points per drive at only .75. It's so physical and aggressive. The tournament ranked 24th, so not as productive as you'd like. But teams can just load up on him. And again, he's got such great ball skills and creativity. I would love to see Doncic focus more on trying to create space and a good shot rather than, you know, trying to draw fouls. He did 52% of those drives right down the middle of the lane. Do you think it's because of the personnel that's allowed, that's uh, available this year? Stefano Tonu has jumped out of his shoes, his right shoes, had to retie it. Now he's got to hustle back down the court into the picture. There he is. Yes, yeah, certainly, Jeff. You know, teams can really pack the paint, shrink the floor on Doncic, making it really difficult to get into the oh. paint. In years past, they had shooters spreading out the defense, and that's when Luca was really, really effective. But give this team credit, they're working really hard. The efficiency just hasn't been there. So some of the Italian fans here, hoping their team can get the victory today. Leave on a winning note. Doncic nails the three. And you know, he's capable of heating up, but I would love to see him just create those perimeter shots for himself. Brits is in the game for Italy now. Now let's see if their defensive energy can pick up. Gigi Datome is in as well, and he misses. Doncic again, two meters behind the arc, and that was long. Yeah. 
Look at this. Do you like this shot from Luca? Yeah, that's his game. You know, he has the advantage on the big man creating into his crossover. There's his dad, by the way. Yeah, and he's obviously the number one supporter here for Luca. Well, I don't know. I think uh, I think there's quite a few people that would like to claim to be that. He's not wearing a Luca jersey today. <laughs> quite a few others. I know what you mean, though. Wonder how long, how old Luca was when he started beating him. Here's Fontecchio. Another three for him. Makes such a big difference to have Fontecchio in the Italy lineup. They really yeah, missed him. He helps you finish possessions. Here's Dragic. Dimets has it taken away by Payola. And Shamar reaches in and commits the foul. That's the third team foul on Slovenia in this quarter. So you like the energy on the offensive boards there from Slovenia. Here's Fontecchio facing up. Too much space. Buries the three. Playing with confidence. Fontecchio. That was a two, in fact. I thought it was a three, but his feet were... Ooh. Here is another bucket for Italy, Richie. Spain pick and roll action with a big man that Tommy setting the back screen. And again, the Italian team is known for excellent pick and roll play. Doncic drives and he is fouled by Richie. Spent most of his day against Latvia in the last game, Richie on the hardwood, diving for loose balls and what have you. And yeah, he definitely got Luca on the left arm. Prochita has come into the game, the 21-year-old. Montecchio takes his, takes his seat. These are the games where the Prochitas, the Samars, Spagnolos, Severinis that you would really expect to step up. Yeah, great opportunity for them to play in a meaningful game with not as much pressure as before. But Jeff, in the, the World Cup, Luka Doncic has drawn an average of 9.4 fouls per game. He's been beat up, and he's done a great job getting to the free throw line. Good D from Luca. Ball goes in the backcourt. Tatome has to put it up and misses. Chabasic. Offensive foul, Severini. So we see the switch, and there's the hook. Really good call. Why is he hooking him like that? He's trying to win position, and rather than use his lower body to seal, he's trying to take you know, an easier way, just hook his arm and try to draw some attention from the official. But that's going to be noticed, isn't it? Yeah, that was just not a good decision on that play. So again, Luca driving to the basket, draws the contact, draws the foul. Coach is having a discussion. What do you what do you think he's saying? Well, I think both coaches in this case are fighting for their players and fighting for their team. Well, he doesn't like the manner of the foul on Doncic, on Luka Doncic. Yeah, well, again, Coach Prozeko is probably saying, hey, this, this guy is He's seeking out the contact. He's ah. initiating contact. But oh, I see. So Sikulic is responding. Sikulic is protecting Luka, saying, hey, he's fouled every single play. And this is what the referees, the challenge to officiate Luka Doncic because of his size, physicality as a primary ball handler. Prochita has to put it up from deep. And Jeff, we talked earlier about Slovenia struggling with their defensive energy. That was an outstanding possession. 
Marco, you have the same position as me. You have the heat pushing from beginning to the end. Four, zero, push. So look at the box out here. So the push was called on Severini. The only thing I would say there, Mike, is it's nice to be able to hear uh, the exchange. The only thing I would say there, it looked like uh, Chabashik kind of had his left arm wrapped around. Yeah, he was trying to lock in his blockout position by using his hands, and then the push came, which was called as a foul. But as we say, the ball doesn't lie, and Chabashik comes up empty from the free throw line. Yeah, well, I think when push comes to shove, uh, yeah, you know. And Jeff, there was a push and a shove on that yeah. play. Oh, Dotome's pass gets away. Samar dives on the floor and gets it up to his teammate. The last several seconds of this quarter. Luca, what's he going to do? The fans are excited. He gets it to Chabashik, and he drives in for the... Oh! Misses the layup. Misses the little runner. So, one quarter is in the books, and Italy lead it 18-15 to 15 over Slovenia. Slow start, three-point shooting. Slovenia one for seven, Lucas one three. Two for nine for Italy. Both teams solid in the paint. Italy 50% from the floor overall, Slovenia 33. Italy no attempts from the free throw line yet. 10 points in the paint for Italy compared to six for Slovenia. Again, a slow start defensively for Slovenia, but they picked up their energy as the quarter went on. And again, you can see the turnovers early gave Italy some easy opportunities in transition. Belly finishing at the rim. Fontecchio, great sign for him to get his shooting touch early. Coach the Coolidge has to like the response from the team to fight back to a three-point deficit here. Well, you know what that is, folks. You can scan in that barcode. And, uh, well, that's going to get you the latest news, scores, videos, games, and much more from the world of international basketball, courtside 1891. You get that in your smartphone and get it now. If you haven't, what are you waiting on? And I think as fans focus on this game, both of these teams now have a feeling for the game. And let's see how the pace of play and the efficiency of play picks up here in the second quarter. Doncic matched up with Tome in his final game. Diouf has checked in for Italy. Paiola missing. And again, I like the use of Samara as your point and putting Doncic off the ball. And they're going to count that. Nice drive for Zorn Dragons. And he can be an X factor for the Slovenia team, as we saw Clement Prepolic and Jakob Blazers, two key guys missing. Look at this strong finish. Splits between the defenders, creates the separation, and gets the shot up to go. Great work from Zoran Dragic. So Melly's going to come back in for Diouf. Uh, Slovenia go to the line to tie it. We saw Italy get on top of Lavia, and then Lavia came back and beat them. And Italy really made a good run in the fourth quarter, but it was too little too late. Uh, this Italian team likes to play free-flowing basketball. Not a super physical team, not a defensive-minded team. They want to kind of get up and down and play freely. So if you put some defensive effort in, you know, you can make runs on them. Dragic hustles down the court. 
And again, look at Samar applying pressure, Dragic making plays. This is the type of contribution they've been looking for out of these guys all tournament. Great to see them stepping up in this classification game. Fontecchio misses. All the momentum right now for Slovenia and Dragic trying to get to the line. He's really propelling him forward. <laughs> he was determined to get to the rim and get a shot up right there. So Dragic goes out. Italy need to discuss things. So we're, we will hear, I would assume, from Paws. So we'll take a pause. So you can scan in that app there to get courtside 1891. Again, Dragic, pretty obvious he wants to get some easy points. He hustles down the court and gets that layup. Five points coming off the bench for Zoran Dragic. Doncic, his pass intended for Toby. And Chabashik reaches in and commits the foul. You know, but give Fontecchio credit on that play. He pushed Doncic's post catch all the way out, as you see the, the foul to stop the fast break. Doncic got pushed all the way to the corner, and as he went to the baseline, he tried to hit Toby in the middle. The pass was a good idea, just not completed. Oh, nice cut. Slovenia, Sebastian left him. And again, you can see the beautiful pick and roll teamwork to hit the mid the roller and a mid roll play by Melly to hit the cutter on the baseline. Three point shot short from Dragic. He got hot for Slovenia in their last game. Fontecchio, or rather, uh, Richie's going to launch it. Fontecchio rebounds. And Jeff, right now, the toll of the tournament looks to be taking its effect on Luka Doncic. You know, Fontecchio is really making him work to get a touch. So. Luca has to work extra hard to go get the ball. Really good work there defensively from Fontecchio. And we see Doncic subs out. That basket for Ritchie took him to four points. Here's an inbounds pass. And Gregor Glass comes in and scores. If you've watched the Slovenia team over the last several summers, they run this backdoor play from the sideline. The player cuts just out of your picture there. Chavasek right to the rim, or is that Glass? Glass right to the rim, casually in a decoy, and they just fired a ball to him. To me, that's a, a staple of the Slovenia sideline package. Fontecchio from deep. Glass trying to get the rebound, but it stays at this end.
Good, tough drive, but Fonteco could not get it to drop. Quickly to the other end, Slovenia. And they tried to pass it to Toby Samar. And Richie goes down the lane. He gets an in one. And Samar made the look to try to get it to Toby. It was deflected, the turnover. But this was Richie and Samar. Yeah, after the turnover, that complicated the situation by fouling softly for a three-point play opportunity. It's really kind of a strange situation with Giga Samar because uh, he really just seemed like everything was working for him last year and everything was going to be it was trending in the right direction. And this year, it seems like he's been knocked back a little bit. And it just doesn't seem like everything is settled over there on that Slovenia bench. Just judging from the reaction of uh, Zoran Dragic after the turnover and the foul. Look at that. Toby from deep. Again, you like the way Mike Toby has come out today. A couple easy early baskets and now hitting a three. Playing with a lot of confidence. His production is important. How about Stefano Tonut? I just ran right past him. Yeah, you got to contain the ball in that pick and roll coverage. Now Dragic flies in. Bisu, Toby for the second time in the game, tries to get a foul. They don't call it, and the three-pointer. Italy back up by two. Glass, the 22-year-old misses, and now the 21-year-old Porochita. And an unsportsmanlike foul called on Zoran Dragic, who's holding his nose to I'm like, uh, watch this. Jeff, this is an easy play. You know. Oh, he really did get him, didn't he? Now, it's not a play on the ball. And it's from behind, for across the body. Like. But what about Prochita with his elbow? I don't think that there was any intent from Prochita to elbow him. I think he's simply trying to push the ball. And as Dragic reached in, Ball. Does not lie. <laughs> However, I think that's a pretty routine call for, you know, the officials here. But I thought I thought Dragic was making a meal out of it. I didn't think he'd been hit in the face, and he had been. No, he got he got hit pretty hard. He got popped in the nose. But if you've coached against him or played against him, you know Zoran Dragic is tough. He's physical. He does not have a glass jaw. I wonder if Gregor Glass has a glass draw. Here is Nicola Melli. That was long. Really good look there for Melli. Here's Glass. Again, just 22. Pass batted away. And oh, good follow from Brochina. You know, the average age of uh, this Slovenia team is 27.8, 27.1 for Italy. Well, there's definitely some young talent from both teams. Good work from Prochita, who's really kind of standing out the last couple of uh, games for Italy. Yeah, he's done really well with his activity and energy. He's made some plays. Ready, 
Hand off, re-screen, pa shoulder gre, look at this back screen. Ajmo, ajmo. Skriš ter, ready. That was Richie cutting in from the baseline. He's a physical player, isn't he, Richie? Yeah, and you love his activity the last several games. He's pretty versatile, he's pretty physical. 31 years of age. And the layup for Giga Dimitz. So this is a great set coming out of the timeout from Coach Nikulic. He put Doncic in the screen. It got Nikulic into the lane, and he was able to drop it off for Dimitz. Really good use of your personnel there. Quick pass. Melly hemmed in on the baseline, gets it outside, and the three-pointer for Spisu. Spisu rises to the occasion, doesn't he, Jeff? Yeah, he's a interesting player. He's a spark. He is a spark. Spisu the spark. Doncic passes out of trouble to Prepilic. High arcing three. And again, great decision making by Luka. He didn't force it. He found his teammate. That's a confidence building play for Slovenia. Bene Prepilic came into this game only hitting 19% of his three point shots. Melly. Has to put up a rush shot, fading, and misses everything. Oh. What a pass to the young Prepolic. And this is what we see from Luca making his teammates better. Beautiful pass in transition. Bine Prepolic is another of the 22-year-old players of Slovenia. Italy with a one-point lead, 3.45 to go. Oh. Pocket pass. It was, and it was beautiful. And the key for young point guards, Luca's eyes were up when he crossed half court. He saw the whole play. He could find the passing lane and made a beautiful delivery to Preperlich for the easy layup. Great play, Luka Doncic. Not making it from his pocket, is he? He's looking for a pocket. He's finding the pocket in between the defenders. Oh. Although you could say it's successful. Could be from the pocket, like it's a dime. Well, you know, out of the pocket. I've had the enjoyment of talking to Nelson about Pistol Pete. And Pistol, Nelson Isley. Nelson Isley played at LSU, grew up working, coaching, and playing with Pistol Pete. Talked about Pistol Pete's passing oh. off the dribble from the pocket area. And he drew comparisons to the creativity and craftiness of Austin Reeves. So that's high praise for Austin Reeves and his playmaking. And we see some great passing here from Luka Doncic as well. Jeff, I just love the stories. I love the stories about great players from years past. Yes, we know them. And then a lot of people who weren't around then don't have that appreciation, do they? And it's That's just the way it goes. But it's really interesting to talk about player comparisons. You know, what yeah. was, you know, Pistol Pete like in his college days at LSU? Hearing those stories from, from Nelson have been fantastic throughout this week. Jeff, what Slovenia is doing is they're finding matchups for Doncic where he can kind of rest as the low man in help defense. Trying to pace his workload. They know how valuable he is to their team. Oh! What a bounce pass from Luka, and it rolls around the rim and falls. Luka Doncic. Much to the delight of the spectators. And again, give credit to Coach Sekulic for putting Luka as the screener to give Italy a different look. They've got some good offense out of this action. And the putback is good for Polinara. Luka's got nine points, 
four rebounds, and that was his fourth assist. Triple-double might not be out of the question for him today. Nice pass to Demets, and he's fouled by Gianpaolo Ricci. And look, the last play was a pop from Luca. This play was a dive, and as he dove, the attention was there. Look at this, Jeff. Left-handed, okie doke. Left-handed nutmeg, left-handed okie doke between the defender's leg, and there it is. Around the world, Demets with the finish. Do you think the soccer aficionados will mind us calling it a nutmeg? I don't think so. They'll share it. I've always known when you dribble between an opponent's leg or bounce, you know, pass between an opponent's leg. In basketball, we always called it the okie doke. Yeah, the okie doke. In okay. soccer, commonly referred to as the nutmeg. Whatever it was, not only did Luca pull off the nutmeg or okie doke, but it was left-handed. You seem like the kind of guy that would have done the hokey pokey. Well, the okie doke and the hokey pokey. Yeah. Pisu into yes. the lane to Polinara. And Giga Demets was up for the foul. So the great thing for here, as Pisu gets into the paint, Polinara is not a consistent three-point shooter. So he plays to his strengths with a great basket cut. Gets to the free throw line. You have to know yourself on the court and play to your strengths. And Polinara did a really good job there. He's got six points on the day. Kile Polinara, 2.05 meters in height. That's 6'9". He's now 31. Still plenty of basketball left for him. Italy cut it back to a one-point deficit here with two minutes remaining in the first half. Doncic gets it over to Hrovat. That would have been the dime to take him to five. Horvat couldn't knock it down. From Paolo Ricci. And oh. good hands from Luka Doncic. Goes he, behind his back. He sat in the middle of the lane and read the play. Steps back. That's good. And you can hear the appreciation. He's got 12 points. But Jeff, he's doing it on both ends of the floor right now, playing so intelligently. Spagnolo to Spisu. You can see Luca encouraging Krepelic, patting him on the back. Polinar, that's short. Horvat out of the break. Now Luca's guarded by Fontecchio. They get the switch to Ricci. Behind the back pass for Horvat. Doesn't go. Oh, and Fontecchio's bounce pass to Spisu goes out of bounds. And Jeff, as the game goes on, you can just see Luca controlling it. Look at this. Oh, between his legs and then a. Tony again, would have finished that. Well, again, credit Luca for trusting his teammates and trying to give them opportunities to make plays. And this is a good timeout from Prosecco in Italy because Doncic is asserting control of this game. Ragazzi abbiamo preso due tiri, non dobbiamo prendere tiri affrettati ragazzi, dobbiamo giocare, dobbiamo giocare fino alla fine, poi abbiamo sempre un tiro solo, e poi abbiamo sempre un tiro solo. L'ultima azione giochiamo, giochiamo a spalle, giochiamo a spalle, andiamo. Uno a tre, a occhio che vanno per due per uno, fanno un tiro veloce. Well, there's Luis Scola and his son 
FIBA Basketball World Cup 2023 Ambassador Scola and really uh, just full of memories for that guy. My favorite game that he ever played, I have to say, was against Brazil 2010 FIBA Basketball World Cup round of 16. And he, I mean, he just uh, set the place alight. It was incredible. He and Marcelinho Huertas for Brazil and Argentina won it. He was the leading scorer at that tournament. They lost in the next game, though, to Lithuania. And the ball goes out of bounds, so it goes back to Italy. Not what you want to do for Slovenia here, but coming out of that timeout. It's not execution, but they do have the two-for-one situation set up. They will get the last possession here. Did you have a favorite Scola game? Well, I just want to say the respect that we had for last World Cup when Scola, at 41 years old, was so great and the Argentina team beat us in the second round uh, that was... for, for, for positioning, which we ended up playing Spain. But at his age, to control the game and play as well as he did, just a legend. Final seconds ticking off the clock here. Doncic steps back, puts it up. He thought he might get it. But he kind of lost his handle, and that prevented the success. So Doncic trudges over to the sideline. His team leads it, though. Slovenia on top, 42 to 41 over Italy at halftime. Looking at the numbers. Similar shooting percentages, Slovenia 45 for the game, 44 for Italy, 29% from three for Slovenia, 28 for Italy. Italy out-rebounding Slovenia, 21 to 17. Italy with nine turnovers compared to seven for Slovenia. Very, very similar numbers in a one-point game. Doncic, of course, 12 points, four rebounds, four assists for Slovenia. Key players, 12 points for Doncic, four rebounds, also has the four assists, five points for Fontecchio, one rebound. But I mean, at least he's out there after being under the weather, giving a good defensive effort on Doncic as well. So a lot of... Uh, action to come but first of all we'll go back and look at the action in the second quarter between these two teams remember Jakob Blazic on the left and Clement Preplich on the right not able to play today so Zoran Dragic when he entered the game he did that that's the same play and that really did spark Slovenia and you can see Paws had to get it had to get a timeout after that. That was uh, what was that? Just a miscommunication? It's, well, no. Again, with two players on the ball at the point of attack, they hit the roller, and in a mid roll, great mid roll playmaking, attacking the help side from Melly. This was Tono turning the corner. Pisu hit that three, and then the, this is the famous play. Oh, I'm not sure that was a nutmeg. From that angle, it didn't look like it was. Let's Are we sure that it was? We need to use the official's instant replay system <laughs> to take, IRS. A, take a look, yes. Well, that was definitely a three. So, we're at halftime. And Slovenia lead it 42 to 41 in the battle for seventh place against Italy. Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. 
no matter your origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. to the halftime break with a two-point lead. Well, double Yutro, double Dan, double Vecchi. Oh, and what a shot from Paco Cruz. He was literally out of bounds and just has such a golden feel for the ball. Oh, Partido, what are you doing? And the alley -oop! Caro this time does not lay it up. He scores right at the end of the third quarter. Buzzer between the legs. Alley -oop pass. Yes, I love it, Jeff. Yes, I'm sure you can have something better. One more, I will. Let it fly from wow! symbolic of the shooting we've seen from Venezuela this first half from the three-point line 12 of 25 in the three-quarter leg bomb nothing but net legends in their own country, but also in the international basketball world forever. Luka Doncic once again arrived at the Mall of Asia Arena with plenty of fanfare, hearing the applause and he has uh, come out and for long stretches of this uh, first half put on a show. So he's got the 12 points. Is your prediction, Mike, that he's gonna get a triple-double? Well, it depends how many minutes he's going to play today, what the, how the game evolves, but he's really set his teammates up well. If they can do a little bit better job finishing and if he can rebound a little bit more, he can make it happen. Three of eight, you can see where he made his shots, but it's not just his shots. He's also been setting up teammates. Yeah, he's done a great job finding his teammates in pick and roll, finding his teammates in transition. And then there, is for Italy, 
Marco Spisu. You called him the Italian spark. He is the, the Spisu spark. He is the Italian spark. And, you know, he's been so big for this team over the last several years. He played so well at Eurobasket. He continually hits big shots. You love his point guard play. I'm a big fan of Spisu. I think he's a great player for Italy. And I love his heart. I think he plays with tremendous passion. And he's kind of the, the driving force behind this team. As we say, he's the Spisu spark. Marco Spisu, nine points, three of five from the floor. You see that he's uh, hit a few three balls. That's his way. Well, yeah, he's not going to finish at the rim. He's not going to be a mid-range pull-up jump shooter. He's a pick-and-roll player, and he buries threes. But he's inspiring to his teammates, for sure. Well, as we look at the Spisu spark, let us just say that we're happy right now that Ignis Brasdekis has not come into the arena, and also Moritz Wagner, because someone has just dropped off some Moe's cookies. We have so much wonderful support from the FIBA staff. <laughs> Jeff, you want to talk about a big assist? Oh, man. MVP board. Somebody else has just entered the MVP voting. And this is exactly what you need, a little pick-me-up in the in the game here today. Did you see the uh, MVP story? Who's leading the race for the MVP? What, For my money right now, it's down to two players. Well, and you know who they are. Yeah, I think you have to look at Bogdan Bogdanovic yep. from Serbia, number yep. one. Um, and then, obviously, you want to look at Germany. And, you know, I would probably go with Franz Wagner from Germany. That's who I'm going with. Yeah. So those two guys. I mean, if you're choosing. Now, it could be that somebody else is going to emerge. So you have players like Milutinov, like Alexei Vramovic, who have been, you know, really important players for Serbia. And for Germany, take your pick. I mean, oops, last night. If he has another big performance, he might be the MVP. You never know against Serbia. The best is the internet proclaiming Andreas Obst the obstacle for Team USA. Yes, he was. That's not the best for the USA fans, obviously. But Jeff, the internet remains undefeated. You can't beat it. So 42-41, Slovenia on top in the battle for seventh place here at the Mall of Asia Arena. And Gianmarco Pazeco. How is this summer going to be viewed for Italy, do you think? The national team program, obviously, Gigi Datome is calling it quits after this. Remembering how they had a, you know, a great run to the Olympics. Uh, you know, and then they, last year at the Eurobasket, they made it to the quarterfinals and we're seconds away from making it to the semifinals. I think people will view this as positive. I think this this roster has overachieved. They've had some great wins in getting into the semifinal rounds. 
seventh or eighth place finish will be really solid. But, you know, Italy is a proud tradition and they always want more. They want to fight for those medals. Uh, but again, you know, some teams are built for that and others are not. But I think it'll be viewed positively. So there's the MVP mascot. And now we'll go down to the Slovenia bench. Well, download the FIBA Basketball World Cup app in your smartphone by scanning in the barcode. You get news videos, results, everything right at your fingertips. Second quarter action underway, or second half action underway here in the Mall of Asia arena. Slovenia with a one point lead, Luka Doncic. Finds his way in and scores over Nicolo Melli. Just so strong, under control, gets right to the rim and finishes. If Italy continues to switch those pick and rolls, look for Doncic to continue to attack. Fontecchio, good box out by Prepolic, keeping Polinar away from the rebound. Boy, good save by Toby. Replit, or rather, Doncic again, right down the lane. And we, you know, that percentage of drives going down the lane has probably gone from 50, what was it, 52%? It's probably up around 54% now. Yeah, he's been very efficient today. Again, the physicality is just a little bit less from this Italian team. But it's the ball skills at that size that give Doncic that advantage. Turn around, Polinara. Horvat. And Italy all of a sudden find themselves down eight points. They have not come out of the locker room strong from halftime. So let's see if Pazeko uh, tears into his players here. Dobbiamo tornare in difesa. Dobbiamo aiutarci. Non dobbiamo andare a due loro. Dobbiamo fare le nostre cose. Andiamo! He doesn't really tear into his players, but he says no, no, he tried to set set the tone. That's not a X's and O's timeout. That's a, a wake up call uh, speaking from the heart trying to appeal to his Italian team here. But, you know, give Slovenia credit. Doncic, two layups right to the rim. He gets where he wants to go. And beautiful spacing in transition and teamwork. The ball ahead, the consecutive pass, and then the pass back. Horvat for the open three. Really good energy from Slovenia to start this half. Well, I got to say, this has to be the best attended seventh place game in the history of the FIBA Basketball World Cup. It's been incredible. Jeff, ours, was, ours was pretty good in Beijing, but we know they weren't there to see Poland. They were there to see the USA. True. Well, I don't know. I think they're there to see you. I think they're here to see Luka Doncic. Doncic magic. Maybe a little tone out after that highlight play. Eight points of difference. Spisu 
Tries to spark his team. He passes to the corner, and Fontecchio right out of the timeout. And look at Pozzecco all of a sudden. And really, I have to say, I, you know, I think that last timeout was quite interesting. Uh, and I think you can understand why the players have his back. Yeah. Again, look at Fontecchio push Doncic out of position to receive the pass. Kobe from deep. Oh! Good luck bounce. That shooter's touch from Mike Toby, and it's a great sign to see him finishing his World Cup with a strong performance. He's been such a big part of the Slovenian success for the last two years. Spisu, and does not get the friendly bounce. Now the pass to Bine Prepolic. That was a good catch. Provat, oh. And the foul called on Spisu. You know, Horvat got the call, but as he attacked the closeout, you have to make a strong play and not play for the call. He took the hit and just fired it up as we see Mike Toby get the shooter's roll. Yeah, the referees won't allow that play to finish before they make that call. There is Doncic! Look out! He's heating up! 19 points for Luka. Spisu from the baseline. Oh, how about Polonara? That's a great finish from Achille Polonara. Second time today. Outstanding. Dacic, his movement draws the defenders, and all he has to do is hand it off to Mike Tovey, who's got 12 points. Dacic now 19 points, six rebounds, five assists. Triple-double watches on. Polinari gets blocked by Dacic, three free throws. Again, I'm sure Doncic would love to have this play back. Yep, hits his hand. We've seen a consistent all tournament protecting the shooter. Polinara is not, he, he's a cold three point shooter. He's a fantastic finisher at the rim as we see. But Doncic, there's no need to run at him and foul him. Just contest to get a hand up, that'll be enough. Now 13 leads Italy by a lot, really. I mean, Spiso has nine. And Fontecchio with some contact gets the foul called. Look at this. What do you think, Mike? Oh, oh he's in the body, but you know, again, if you're Slovenia, you're saying, hey, this was the call we were hoping for in earlier games where people were really being extra physical with Luca. Oh. And another one called this one on Melly. And Gianmarco Pizzecco trying to figure some, some things out. Polinara. If they could get him to play at his elite level, they're just a different team. And he hasn't, doesn't seem like he's been that way. Look at him, he's just slipped over. Today he's been good, obviously. Fontecchio for three. Oh, it's been a cold shooting day for Fontecchio, but Spusu there, front and back stays out. Doncic goes behind his back to avoid Paiola. Oh. And then he throws it into the hands of Melly. And Fontecchio for three. It's 
Spain pick and roll action, they get out of it. Draw the switch. So the foul. Two free throws. So here's a look at the replay. And again, it's pretty well, obvious he foul on, oh no, they called it on Payola. I would have thought they would have called it on. It looked to me like Polinara no, had ball. two hands no, on him. It's a foul because he lost the ball. He gathered the ball. I guess you could have called it on either, really. Yeah. Well, he's signing off in style, Luka Doncic. He's got 21 points now, seven rebounds, five assists. Rochita back in the game, as well as Datome. Here's Prochita. Oh, and Luka Doncic took it right away from the young man. And then Polinara gets the block. And now a technical foul has been called on Doncic. So he gets the steal here, and he thought he had a layup. Polinara comes back. Good block. Doncic looking for a foul. Hey, Jeff, we've seen Doncic deserve technical fouls in the past, and we don't know what was said, but, you know, I did not see any outwardly incorrect behavior from Doncic in that situation. But maybe he said something yeah, that... Yeah, it's possible that he, maybe he said the magic word. Yeah. But he's definitely been getting his share of calls go his way today, so. And I think he's been on good behavior today. He's not wasted his energy yelling at referees, being upset at referees. My, my thing is that it can't be all or nothing with him. He can't get all the calls and he can't get no calls. And I think that finding that balance is the challenge. He's played with really good energy out here today. He's been really productive. Melly. Called for a moving screen. Yep. Just kind of holding him as he's fighting through. I mean, when you get in the, in, you know, when you're battling for rebounds and you're fighting for position, there's definitely going to be contact. Without a doubt. So sometimes it's. What would you say is to the referee's discretion? When yeah, it's just too and that's much? managing the game, and that's what we've seen well. I mean, the numbers that we've heard. Preplich, the long three, misses everything. Officials in the tournament are 91% accurate according to their stats, which is really impressive. According uh, to the calls they actually make. Yeah, and that's a great number for these guys. And just to be clear, that doesn't include calls that they haven't made it's just the ones that they have made yeah the ones that are recorded coming into this game made a call coming in hey, Jakob Lasic is a player that is just indispensable for Slovenia and I just feel like maybe even more so than Vlatko Cancar he's got he's the player that when he's not fully fit they're they're really missing the most yeah he's one of those supporting cast members that can make a play he's a great defender Dragic! You know, just like Dragic making that three, Vlasic can do the same. He plays both ends, he defends, he hits shots. And we've seen him just such an experienced part of this team. So Severini, Ricci in the game now with Paiola and Satome. There is Severini. And that was a great contest there by Doncic. Samar. Oh, Man, what is, Cheetah goes down with. <laughs> what is bench. going on in the paint? These guys are wrestling around down there. Rochita with the foul. Greco Roman basketball. That's what it looks like, Jeff. Two possessions in a row. Dimech. 
ends up on the on the floor in the in the lane. But how about Prochita? Prochita giving away some size in that matchup. Dragic makes the first. Severini, good hustle, save it in bounds. Again, Jeff, notice the save to the corner. Oh, look at Poyola take it and accelerate. And good job, Demetz, knocking it off the rim. Oh, look at the spin from Luca. Oh, my goodness. Look at him go, and they call the foul. And she get, and look at Donchis' <laughs> father asking for a technical to be called on Pazeco. My goodness. Well, we know where he gets it from, basically. Look at this. Nice spin. Doncic, Doncic kind of shaking his head, looking over at Pazeko. I don't know if he said something else. And he makes both. And Doncic now has racked up 23 points today. Oh, and Paola loses the ball, dribbles it off of his leg. And Jeff, as you watch Paola make the move, he gave the little head snap, trying to influence the officials to draw a foul, and then lost control of the ball out of bounds. Pass Dragic to Chabashik, back to Luka, a wide open three, doesn't take it, decides to drive, back outside, Shamar for three. So again, Jeff, Luka Doncic is so used to creating shots off the dribble. This was his teammates creating an open look, catch and shoot for him. Rather than passing on that rhythm three, it would have probably been a better choice for him to shoot that consecutive pass catch and shoot shot rather I, than getting into the lane. I think he's trying to get uh, Giga Samar a, a and, bucket and, that's and a to great get him in the thing. flow. Yeah, that's a great thing. But if you pass up open shots, it disrupts the rhythm of your yeah, team. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I agree. Good job, Spagnolo. He'll be playing at Alba Berlin next year. Doncic from the corner. I think the crowd would have erupted if he'd made that one. Datome scrapping for the ball, and Chabashek can't save it. He does save it, in fact. Great effort by Chabashek. Literally flew into the, uh, look at this, hustle. Next to us, where the Lithuanian commentators are. Look at him. There you are, high five, Jeff. I was trying, I was trying to get a high five. He didn't give it to me. He had to get back and play. He would have. He's focused. He's making hustle plays, and it's great. You're a great teammate. You want to reward him. Give him a high five. I'll give it to him after the game. High five's the mark of positive energy, good connectivity between teammates. And, Jeff, you're a connector. I like to think so. I try to bring everybody together. You do. The Lithuanian commentators, everyone, the Italian commentators. Everyone. And so much so that left. people stop by Moe's Cookies at Mall of Asia and hook you up. Of which we've already eaten one apiece. And they're very good. 
67-52. Can Italy come back and win this game? Seems a bit awkward for him right now. Spisu from deep. Well, of course they can if it's the Spisu spark that sparks them into life. So back to a 12-point game. Spain pick and roll with Doncic setting the back screen. But Dimech, you know, you love the physicality he brings to the team. Here he's called for the offensive foul. I do love it. You know, he was in that 2017 FIBA Eurobasket team that won, that beat you guys. Yeah, we had a great game in Helsinki, Finland against these guys. Goran Dragic had a great performance, had 30 plus points against us. Luka, I think, had 11. He hit a big three late, but we fouled out both of the Slovenia big men. They ran out of fives late, but we ran out of time. Spisu Spark, another deuce for him, and now it's a 10-point game. And remember when Luca played at that PB Eurobasket, and they won it in Italy. Of course, they beat you guys in Helsinki. Yeah. That was the first multi-hosted Eurobasket. Yep. Um, multi-hosted by different countries. He made the All-Star 5, and he was only 17 years old. It was amazing. He played so well. Here's Luca downtown. You know it! The crowd erupts again! The Spisu Spark, will he have the answer? Hey. Yes, he will! And Spisu is threatening to take over. What a finish to this quarter. Marco Spisu suddenly with 14 points. Nobody will probably catch Luca, but look at this. When this guy starts to feel it, you better look out because number zero can shoot threes with the best of them. Seventy to sixty, Slovenia on top of Italy at the end of three. Shooting numbers picking up for both teams. Forty-one percent for Slovenia from three, thirty for Italy. Free throw attempt number and make number advantage for Slovenia. Italy still out rebounding Slovenia, twenty-eight twenty-six. The 12 turnovers matching the 12 assists is a factor for Italy. Again, the single difference maker in the game is obviously Luka Doncic and his performance. Yeah, really, uh, other than the technical foul that he received, I mean, it's been, a, it's been all good, really, for everybody. And you can see that he's four of nine from three-point range right now. I mean, there's no doubt the fans want to see him play, and he has come out and put on a show. Seven rebounds, six assists. Could get the triple-double, which I think is, what do you think, that's the sign of excellence? Well, that shows you're impacting the game in a variety of ways, like Jip. Uh, Jip would like to remind us that if you want the FIBA Basketball World Cup app in your smartphone, you can scan in the barcode to get news, videos, Results, fixtures, everything you need. Jip says you can get it in a jiffy. So Richie Spisu, who just hit the three. Rochita. Spagnolo and Severini in the game. Spagnolo drives. And Jeff, this was an outstanding defensive possession for Slovenia to start this fourth quarter. They were on time with their coverages. They were working together and team rebounding. Well, the ball goes off of Prochita's hands, so it'll stay at this end. So Italy trailing 70 to 60 and trying to lock things down. Here's Doncic. 
They got to slow down Luca though. The foul has been. No, he stepped out of bounds. I thought they were calling a foul. He just backed into the deep corner and took one step too far. Prochita. That was an air ball. And Luka Doncic looks like he got kicked on that shot, possibly. Oh, traveling. I like those little cameos from the referees. Yeah, Adamir doing a very good job communicating, you know, hey, I accept your opinion that as a coach you can accept somebody that is communicating with you. Severini, that's short. Shabashik stepped out of bounds. And for the second time in a row, Slovenia are uh, trying to keep their feet on the court in play. Well, this is a way to make your offense inefficient. Back-to-back -back turnovers by stepping on the sideline. Fagnolo, Ricci from the baseline. Nice shot from Ricci. He's a keeper. He'll be in this team for a while. Yeah. You love his versatility. He plays at a good pace. He plays pick and roll, pick and pop, and there really actively spaces the floor for easy two. Well, they like to go to that corner, and Chabashik misses, and the door opens a little bit more for Italy here if they can score on this possession. Procida charges right into Zoran Dragic. Why is, why is that hard for Procida not to charge? I mean, that's, he's got to know he So has to go up or pass. As a young player, he just needs some work attacking defenders in transition. That would be time well spent in the gym. You know, that's a feeling for being able to beat your defender. The experienced Zoran Dragic shows his toughness taking the charge. Yet again. Turns over, now a break for Italy, 3-on-1, bounce pass, and how about that? And a foul as well, Fontecchio going to the line for a three-point play. I think they got Nikolic for a foul. Oh, Nikolic. Sorry, you're right. Oh. Well, I'm not so, sure he had the right angle there. Yeah, so Jeff, let's let's call it what it is. Nikolic missed him, and I think they missed the call. My bad, okay? Good. Okay, so maybe that 91% it went success down, rate. <laughs> it went down to 90. However... Excellent work by the officials today. And again, let's give Adamir Zarapovic, you know, credit. He owns it and he communicates it. And, you know, you can respect that if you're a coach or a player. Five point game. Doncic steps back. Another three. So, As Italy get closer, Luka Doncic steps up. And you see Slovenia bringing Nikolic into the screen so that if they switch small, small, or switch the screen, Spisu goes on Doncic, and Italy doing everything they can to avoid switching into that matchup. Pontecchio for three, that's short. They get it back. Pontecchio does not miss two in a row. And again, the activity of Ricci grabs the offensive rebound, gets it right back to the shooter, 
and the percentages of a second attempt like that go way up. And another chance, here comes Melly. As the Coolidge wants a timeout, Nikolic looks up and says, gee, where is the whistle? Watch this again. Uh, that's just a great play by Melly, in my opinion. Yeah, it looked at first like he pushed off, but nah. there was no real shove. Well, Luka Doncic is putting on the show 29 points, eight rebounds, six assists. And, well, you know, every time he scores or does something, there's a lot of applause from the crowd. Well, they just lost their cushion. Great run, 10-3 here in the fourth quarter by Italy. And we have a game, 73-70, with six minutes to play. Plenty of time, plenty of action left here. Doncic travels. So traveling on Doncic, and again, another chance for Italy. Spagnolo into the corner. Remember, it was the Spisu spark that got Italy moving in the right direction. Gets it to Melli. Bounce pass, Richie! Oh, what a block from Demons! And then the foul. That was beautiful offense from Italy. No, no, no for sure. Upright play. So, Italy think, thinking this was on the way down. And we heard the referee say no, upward for sure. So, Demets. That's a great defensive play by Demets. So the foul took place in the backcourt. If this was moving the inbound into the backcourt, that helps Slovenia. They will have a 24 second shot clock to work with. So now Italy running a second defender at Doncic. Look at him just play with poise. Oh, good hands, they force the turnover, and Melly for the dunk. So good game plan adjustment from Italy. Now as they're switching, they oh. run a second defender at Doncic. Nikolic from downtown! That was big, Alexi Nikolic. They were teetering. There's Fontecchio. How about that, Mike? I don't know what it is about these classification games, but they have really been coming to life late. Well, teams, you know, figure it out. They get a rhythm, and then they start to play well late, going for the win. Don't 
Doncic tries to get the foul. No whistle. Three on one break. Bisu pulls up, clangs it, and the rebound and put back is there, and Italy have tied it. And this is a good timeout from Coach Sekulic. Doncic talked to the officials, did not get back in transition. Yep. And again, Italy is going to capitalize on that opportunity. We've got a tie game. Seventh and eighth place up for grabs. Marcos Pisu had been hot. He missed that, but Italy there. And as you mentioned, uh, one of the Slovenia players slow to get back on defense because he was talking to the refs. It wasn't only one of them, right? It was two or three. I don't know why it is they get sucked into these, like everything that goes against them, they have to talk to the refs and it distracts them from playing. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and the point is, use your energy in winning ways. Referees are not going to change their calls, Jeff. No. Nikolic. Chabacic, it looks good. It is good for number 55. And against Coach Sekulic with a timeout to calm everyone down, give them organization against the trap. Post reaction from Doncic and teamwork. Big three on the backside. Oh, what a drive from Spagnolo. So, a foul called, and uh, here it is again, Spagnolo. And they are going to take Gigi Tatome out of the game. That's it. Tatome, the last time. One of the Italian greats. And this is nice for Slovenia applauding Datome as well. And they just showed his parents as well. They've come here to watch him play. Well, we really enjoyed watching him play, not just for Italy, but for his clubs. And uh, I reiterate, I think he will probably stay involved in basketball, though I don't know if it'll be with the Federation or with the club or maybe some type of business side, but he's been good for basketball. He's been great for Italian basketball. He's had a great career, and this is a really nice moment for him. Well done. And Richie knocks it out of bounds. And not to steal the limelight away from Datome, but that reminds me of the incredible maybe the most powerful moment I've ever seen in basketball when Luis Scola came out of the game for Argentina at the Olympics and Australia just stopped and everybody stood up and applauded. It was an incredible scene when he left the game for the last time. So, Totome will be hoping that Italy can uh, seal the deal here. 79-78. He had an incredible career. Totome, NBA, leading clubs in Europe. Obviously, Italy, and now he's passing the baton. And Demet's called for the foul. 
So plenty of incentive really for both of these teams to, to really go after each other here in the final minutes. Yeah, the game has evolved into a great battle for seventh or eighth position. Oh, Fontecchio can't quite keep it. Keep He's frustrated right. with himself there, made a great cut, just lost the ball out of bounds. So now Nikolicin as a point guard here. Spain pick and roll action with Lucas setting the back screen. Nikolic gets it into the paint, the whistle blows, and he's got free throws. Here it is again, Nikolic driving, Spisa, oh yeah, that's a clear push from Spisa. Yeah, he was beat, but a good, good strategy here from Slovenia to put Luka in that back screener in the Spain action. A lot of teams like to switch it guard to guard Team's not leaving Luca in a switch. That gave Nikolic the opportunity to get in the lane and draw the foul. Nikolic, another of the Slovenia players that's been around for a while. He was in that team that won the title, yep. the Eurobasket in 2017. He was a reserve point guard then and has gradually grown his role. More and more responsibility, more and more help to this team. So they need up three. And that time Horvat reaches out and commits the foul on They don't want to give him a clear look, but now they have no more fouls to give. Putting it up and in. Spisu for three. Twenty points for the Spisu Spark. I mean, he had nine at halftime. The spark has uh, grown into a flame here. Playing with his heart. You see the good pass to the diving Melly. Melly with another outstanding playmaking pass out of his pick and roll, mid roll. That time a little deeper, Spisu buries it. And again, Slovenia looks like they're setting up another Spain pick and roll action here. Doncic has the back screener. And Nikolic, good job Spisu with the hand in the face. And here comes Italy, they can take the lead with a three. What a thrilling finish. Bounce pass, Spiso, and he ties it. Great pass, Melly pulling the strings right at the top of the key. Melly showing his skills. Look at this beautiful backdoor pass to the cutter. And we talked earlier, Spiso is not a finisher at the rim. He's a three-point shooter, but he takes the backdoor cut in the second side action, finishes at the rim. Great combination today, Melly and Spiso. Tie game, 121. Look for Slovenia to play pick and roll with Doncic. He'll choose his screener and target a matchup. Hard show, trap. Oh boy, look at that, the steal, Spagnolo. Here comes Izuri. He pulls up, he follows, Richie follows, and Italy have taken the lead. 
And Jeff, this is so deserving of Richie, the extra effort, hustling in transition, going to the boards, the multiple efforts. Italy has done it better for the majority of the game. And here in the most important moments, Richie comes through with a big putback. Well, nice fight back for Italy. We saw them have the fight back against Latvia. It was too little too late, but today they've come back. Well, Luka Doncic does have his double-double, 29 points, 10 rebounds, and he's one turnover away from a triple-double. That would be a bizarre one, wouldn't it? But I think overall his uh, play would be highlighted for the positives. And now we're going to see if he can come up with a play that's going to put Slovenia back on level terms or maybe even in front. And last possession, Melly with a hard show, almost a trap forcing Doncic to give up the ball. Look for them to screen with a different player. Here comes Horvat with Ricci. There's the switch. They run the double. Right back to Doncic. Two players on Doncic. There's Doncic. Chabasic wide open. Good! And Jeff. Doncic. Trusting his teammates to make the extra pass. What a confidence booster for Chabasic. Look at that. Eight assists now for Doncic. And Chabasic is quite a threat, isn't he, from deep? Yeah, he's a shooter. He's made two of five today. He's going to continue to shoot. But again, Italy double teaming Doncic, trying to make someone else beat him. Chabasic steps up. Italy needs, Italy needs a big basket. Slovenia looking for a stop. Mike, this has been worth the price of admission for these fans. You know they are loving it. You can hear them. Most of them chanting defense, defense, but Italy, the bit between the teeth. Oh, and they call a charge on Fontecchio. Gregor Horvat taking one for the team. So Doncic, they attack him after the switch, but he does a great job directing Fontecchio into help, and Horvat gave up his body to take the charge. Now with 19 seconds, Slovenia has to get the ball in, and you want it in the hands of Doncic to make free throws. Expect one trap and a foul for Italy. You see they're double teaming Doncic before the ball comes in play. Oh, they wanted Horvat. They're going to challenge this to see if they can upgrade it. I think he needs to tell them to use his challenge. Unless he's already used it, and I don't remember it. And I don't think that's an unsportsmanlike, but they're going to look at it anyway. So once you use your challenge, you have no more left. That's why you want to save him as long as possible, I guess. Train camera. No, he looked, he was for go for the ball, then the blue player looked. No. He's the, trying to reach the ball. ball. Then it's blue player hooked it, and then he created this guy. Yeah, so I mean, normal really still foul. normal foul. Okay. Two free throws. Two you. free throws. No. That was well explained, and when you slow it down, you see how Horvat hooks him. Yeah, again. He's trying to get it. But this is again playing for a call. 
and this is why officials have such a difficult time, but that was well officiated. It was a physical foul. Ricci made a play on the ball, and it was almost through the body, but Horvat clearly tried to pick up the unsportsmanlike by hooking the arm. Well, if he's the man they wanted to foul, he makes the first. Do you think Slovenia will foul if he makes this and not allow Italy to take a three? Yes. The reason being you want them to have to make more plays than just one shot. Sometimes they don't, though. Now, the clock did not start on time, perhaps? And this allows the matchup Slovenia defenders to match up with Italy. This helps Slovenia set their defense. Italy got to go quick. They want to take the three. Will they allow it? Oh, and it goes off of Fontecchio's hands. Can you believe it? Well, Two like, turnovers at the worst possible time on Fontecchio. Yeah, unfortunate. Fontecchio, such a great player, so important to this team. He just got ahead of himself there. And now these are important free throws for Zora Dragic. If he makes one, it's effectively a two possession game. Well, you never know, 6.9 seconds. Maybe there will be a twist in the tail. Now, if there's a rebound, you would look for Slovenia to foul right away. He makes it, so now Slovenia definitely do not want to foul a three point shooter, and they're going to talk about that. I would imagine that would be one thing they might talk about. 100%, Jeff. But if they speak in Slovenian, we're not going to know. Actually, we're going to hear the Italians. So, Mike, really with 89-85, Italy will advance the ball, and they don't necessarily have to go for a three. They get a quick two, and then... Yeah, they have a timeout. So the main point here is if you have a play, something quick to the rim or a quick attempt, try to get the score as fast as you can. Sylvania looking not to foul. You can get a quick bucket and then try to get a foul and play the free throw game and see if you can call a timeout, advance it again, and get a three-point look. No, they're going for a three. And, oh, they didn't get it. They put it up quickly, and that's how it's going to finish. Spagnolo missing. So, Slovenia hold on. And uh, a really wonderful seventh place game, to be honest. I mean, that was fantastic. Luka Doncic, I think, probably going to be the MVP because of his overall contributions. There you see Gigi Detome, who has played his last minutes as a professional basketball player, playing his last minutes for Italy. And hearing the uh, warm regards from everybody, it's uh, it's one big family in international basketball, and they will be fully aware of, of, of what he has done. But for Slovenia and Luka Doncic, great game. 29 points, 10 rebounds, 8 assists, 9 
turnovers you can live with because of everything else that he did. Yeah, great performance from Luca. He's the difference maker, helping Slovenia finish seventh in the World Cup. Again, that's a tremendous accomplishment for this team. Respect to Italy, they really battled out here today. Great effort playing in Datomi's final game. Entertaining seventh, eighth place game, Jeff. Lots of good action and respect for both teams. Well, you can only have one winner at a World Cup, and sometimes you just have to finish as high as you can. That was the case, obviously, for both of these teams. And it's Slovenia that end up leaving uh, probably with a better taste in their mouths, getting the win. But in the grand scheme of things, I think Italy will be happy that they came out and played hard. You can see Datome, well, you can't see him. Yeah, you can now. Datome hugging his family. So that was a nice moment. Uh, 13 threes for Slovenia, 14 makes inside the arc. Jeff, look at the free throw advantage for Slovenia. 22 out of 28 compared to 9 of 10. Rebounds evened up, but still Italy on top. 35, 32. Turnovers about the same and assists are even. It was a well-played game. Both teams battled in the end. Luca trusted his teammates in the end as he gave up the ball, allowing Chibasek to make a big three. Zoran Dragic sparking the team. Nikolic making plays in the fourth quarter. Dimec physical defensively. Solid team win from the supporting cast around Luka. Luka Doncic uh, will collect the TCL MVP award for the game. Much to the delight of the spectators. With all the roller coaster times of Luka Doncic here on the hardwood. You, you wonder what his uh, feelings will be after today, after getting that and hearing the applause. Well, Jeff, I'll tell you, I've got so much respect for Luka coming out here. You know, this guy played 38 minutes and played with his heart and he trusted his teammates. He made his teammates better. You know, it wasn't always easy. It was super physical. He's a target for game plans. You know, there's always high expectations for him. But he loves his country. He plays for his country. And tonight, he helped them finish seventh place in the world. And that's that's a, a good day for Slovenia basketball. And it's going to be really interesting to see as we look at the highlights of this game and Coach Pazeko in Italy. And I, I respect Italy a lot for coming back and battling away. It's been a, a tough spell for them here at the Mall of Asia Arena after they left the Araneta. Remember, they came here having finished first in that group. Uh, but they battled to the end. But it's going to be interesting to see how both of these teams get ready for the FIBA Olympic qualifying tournaments next year, but also the European qualifying window that's going to be coming up in February. Yeah, and this is the challenge for Slovenia because I don't know if a team's more impacted than they are. Luka Doncic obviously playing for the Dallas Mavericks. It's a different team when Luka is there, he can elevate them onto the world stage, and then the supporting cast has to continue to grow in the windows without him. So Slovenia win the first game of the day, 89-85. They finished seventh, Italy eighth, and now we're gonna see Latvia take on Lithuania in the battle for fifth place, a Baltic battle. And as Luka Doncic throws his shoes into the crowd, everybody is happy to say, Thanks for coming, Luca. Have a great trip home. Italy win it, or Italy come back, but they fall to Luka Doncic and Slovenia, 89-85.
Stay here for additional post-game coverage, including cameras in the locker room and the press conference.